big box brand making an esports enthusiast level 60% keyboard? Okay, Razer, let's see what you got. Hey guys, it's Freedom, and if you're new to the channel, I look over and review tech from the world of gaming. So leave a like and subscribe for more videos, Now let's get into the review. Alright, now starting off with the box, Razer has this beautiful small white box. Now I've personally never owned a white Razer product before, so this is kind of a nice touch. Uh, taking a deeper dive into the box, you'll find the keyboard that's been wrapped in plastic. Uh, the white braided USB-C to USB-A cable, a uh, little note on the cable. Uh, the head is actually wide enough so that if you want to replace it with a custom cable, you can totally do that. Also in the box, you'll find uh, the user manual as well as some Razer stickers because, come on guys, who doesn't love a Razer sticker? Alright, so why 60%? Well, this board is actually really small. The Huntsman Mini comes in at 11.6 inches long, 4 inches wide, and a height of about 1.3 inches. So this board barely takes up any room on your desk, and if you're like me, and you're a palm mouse grip user, I need all the precious space I can get. Alright, now in terms of construction, this board is just really nice. It's got that aluminum top plate. Uh, the rest of the board is plastic, but to me, that's just really not a bad thing as there's almost no deck flex on this board at all. And then if we go underneath the board, you get the words, for gamers, by gamers, etched along the bottom of the board, which I think is a nice touch. Uh, along with that, you get four rubberized feet that do a pretty good job keeping the board steady. You also get your six degree and nine degree rubberized angled feet, just in case you want to prop that board up. Uh, all in all, I'm actually pretty impressed with the build quality on this board, and I think they did a great job with it. Now, we can't talk about build quality without mentioning the switches and the keycaps. Now, the keycaps on this board are double shot PBT. Now, I'm not sure if it's just the white color of the board or if it actually did change something, but it actually does look like the illumination of the board is way more vibrant than what you'll find uh, on like the Huntsman TE. I really like the colors shine through on these keys. Also on the side of the keys you'll find your secondary functions, uh, however they are not illuminated. Uh, another side note, Razer does make different color PBT keycaps since the bottom row is standard on these boards, uh, but a bit of a warning to you guys, they will not have that secondary function rows printed on there, at least at the time of this video. Uh, so if you're in the market or if you're brand new to 60%, I would stay away from those. Uh, and if you just don't care, then hey, go for it. Uh, but if you're going to get it from Razer, you're going to be stuck with either black or white with the secondary function keys. Now the Husband Mini does come in two flavors. You have that purple clicky switch along with the red linear switch. Now I actually have the red switches here, so that's what I'm going to talk about. But I will dive into the purple switches when I do my Huntsman family comparison, so stay tuned to that. But right now, it does seem like Razer did listen to the feedback that was given about the first generation red switches. They were just too loud, too clacky for linears, and they kind of gave this really springy bounce sound anytime you really click on that. You'll hear that later on uh, in the sound test. So what's the fix? Razer put silicone dampeners directly into the switch itself, which I gotta say, it really does work. These switches feel so much different, and in the sound test, you'll definitely hear that. I was truly impressed. Uh, the performance, however, is the same to what you found on the first generation. Uh, right here, we're looking at about 40 grams of actuation force, one millimeter of actuation distance, and a total key travel of about 3.5 millimeters. So there's our fast, linear switches. Now I can't prove this, but from my own experience, it almost seems like the new red switches have a more tighter feel to them. Uh, almost like the friction of the dampeners is actually rubbing up against the key or doing something when it actually comes to pressing the keys. They seem a little bit tighter. Uh, I know that one of the big complaints with the Huntsman TE was that they were feather light to the touch and that if you could just rest your pinky on one of the keys, it would just drop down and actuate. That's not the case here. There's a little bit of friction there, and honestly, I really like it. I'm not getting those common mistypes that I was getting with the TE. I can actually use this board to type. I really love that. And as well as for gaming, it still has the speed. 
of the red linear switch. So I can't prove that they actually did something to it, but from my experience and my testing, I really like the typing on this way better than what you'll find on the TE. Now onto the software side of things, love it or hate it, we're here with Synapse 3. Now, I personally have no issues with Synapse. I've never really had an issue with it. I've had a couple hiccups here and there where something just doesn't launch or it forgets my profile. Uh, that was a couple years ago when it was still in beta. Uh, but since then, I've honestly had no issues. But I do appreciate the ability to change your RGB lighting uh, directly off the board as well as have up to, I believe it's five profiles stored to the board itself. It just goes to show that Razer is listening. Love them or hate them. I do believe they are trying to make a change within the culture of the company. Now enough about me talking about the boards, let's have the boards talk a little bit. What did I tell you, huh? Huh? Don't those new switches sound amazing? Whatever they did, it worked. So at the end of the day, is the Huntsman Mini really worth buying? At $120 for the purple switches and $130 for the optical red switches, these boards are pretty expensive. And right now I can already say and think of the glorious GMMK keyboard $100 that even has modular replaceable switches in it. Uh, which for me would be the better value. But if you want a solid mass produced board from a big box company, uh, you have a lot of chroma and you want to be in that ecosystem, or if you're just like me and you just like Razer products, then it's a solid board and it's an easy buy. Beyond that, honestly, I would start looking elsewhere, whether it's at Glorious, Ducky, and there's a plethora of other 60% keyboards out there and they're all really good and I can't really find something on the Huntsman that would say is better. Uh, the only thing it might have is the optical switch, but if I was going to be honest, the Cherry MX Silvers or Reds are right around in the same position as the optical Red switches. But for me, uh, because I do buy everything that I review, I'm obviously going to be using the 60% keyboard. I do love this thing, but I'm looking into the future and hopefully get my hands on a couple other boards. And uh, who knows, that might become my main. All right guys, so that's gonna do it for me. That was my review of the Huntsman Mini. Uh, like I said, great board, but if you're in the market uh, for a 60%, I definitely would start looking maybe somewhere else first before looking at the Huntsman Mini. Not saying it's a bad board, I just, I'm just saying there are better options out there. And thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to check me out on social media. Uh, links to my socials, as well as the product links will be found in the description below. Guys, again, thank you so much for watching, and as always, you have the freedom to choose.